Okay, glad you finally figured out the YouTube. I'll turn the sound off because I know you said to do that. Uh, your lateral flexion was quite good. And I'm sure you did it a bunch more times. If you didn't, I'd do it at least three or four times each time you get on and then do that uh, vertical flexion three or four times when you get on. Very nice back up. You're very straight which is hard for gated horses to back up straight. Nice turn on the forehand. And then I believe you go off to do a, I love the sachet of the walking horses, <laughs> um, into your flat walk. At least that's what it looks like, but I just started the video, so we'll see. So I would keep a little bit more contact on your horse. I would, like his head a little bit lower at your flat walk and he doesn't understand to keep it down there because you're very light with your rein so for now i would hold more contact because you got a big loop in the rein and his head still kind of up by your chest level and what i'd like to see is him at this flat walk have a little bit more relaxed spine he just looks a little bit inverted to me. It's not bad. He's stepping up. The footfall's good. It's a clear. Good. It's a clear four beat footfall, but that would be my critique is to try to get the top of his head lower, maybe like waist level. And to do that, I think you need to keep more contact on him because he's just not aware of it. In time, once he understands completely, you'll be able to ride with this contact. But right now, he doesn't understand it enough. So again, I would just like to see less inversion in that back. And to get more of that contact, what I do is have a little bit more bend in your elbow and be pulling your hand just back towards your hip and holding it just a little bit with more tension, kind of like you did right there when you stopped, right there. That's where I would rather have his head a little bit lower, and then as he drops down, then you can release more. But he has a big curve in his neck, and of course, as they get older, we're always trying to be nicer to their neck since we know they can have uh, neck issues. Your riding position, of course, Looks beautiful. There it looked like his stifle gave out a little bit, but. A little bit, but you got your shoulders over your hips, your heels underneath you. All of that looks quite good. And again, he has that clear four beat footfall. So just more contact. Okay, I'm going to rewind it back because he just put his head down a little bit. And that's where I would like to see it more. So, so right there, I'd rather see his head a little bit more like that. Okay, down a little bit more and then in time, less arch in his neck, just a little bit more neutral. But to me, if he gets his head down a little bit lower and pokes his nose out a tiny bit, he doesn't have to be straight on the vertical here. It's going to be better for his spine in the long run. So maybe you'll get more of that as you go on. That's a little bit better there. So every time he goes down, then I would give more with his, uh, I would give more with your rein when he comes down that far. But again, in the beginning, you might have to hold your rein more like that, like where you are right there, more contact. Now, a lot of times when you ride them with more contact, that was a good turn on the forehand, except he just walked away. So you just got to hold a little bit more contact. Um, again, they don't understand in the beginning and they go from what they've been doing all their life. So a lot of times you got to ride with what you feel like you're pulling on them the entire time until they understand and then once they understand to keep their head down you'll be able to loosen up a lot more but right now he just keeps it there it seems that's what's more natural for him because you really don't have much contact on him at all right there so to help him like he's bringing his head up there i would have bent my elbow and pulled more on the rein to show him to keep his head down lower 
Now, as you go faster, we might have to bring his head up if he's getting trotted, but for the flat walk, he's holding this well. It's a good four beat footfall, so we can adjust his neck and spine a little bit more to be what's better for him. So some of the time he throws his head up a little bit like that, and and that's where I would have put a lot more contact on him because otherwise they don't know not to do that. So when he gets his head way up, you see it coming up by your chest, which it is, I would hold tighter. So I think he's got it in him. He would know what to do, but you got to give him more guidance and then just make sure I think you're doing a turn on the forehand that you don't stare at his head because you're kind of looking down at his head. You want to keep your eyes up, look where you want to go because it does help the horse a lot versus when we stare down at their head, it's much more difficult for them to understand what we really want them to do. So here it looks like you're going a little bit faster. So it looks like you're going more towards a running walk and uh, his head is still a little bit too high. So I'd apply more pressure. You don't need to pump your arms. You know, your arms might be going with your motion of your body, but otherwise you don't need to pump your arms. So there he paced and I... paced and I would have stopped him, backed him up, and then gone forward and started again. Because otherwise, if you let them pace, they don't really know that's the wrong thing. So I still think you need to ride with more contact with your hand coming back towards your hip and then just keep your arms still. Don't pump at this point in time because he's getting too much release and so his head just keeps coming up. It's harder for them to pace with their head down so the more we can get his neck and back release, the better it will be. With the flat walk and the running walk, their head's supposed to kind of be neutral and a relaxed back. So again, I'd like to see, I'm going to stop you for a second. I'd like to see that tight of a rein or even a little bit more until he's more consistent. And I'd like to see his head down the top of his head more where his eye is. So kind of waist level here. Even there, you have more contact, but his head's too high. And then he's kind of shortened up his stride a little bit. There he... There he's going more towards a step pace. Now, it looked like it happened in the same part of your arena every time, and if that's the case, it's usually the footing that's causing that, or it's an incline or a decline that's causing them to do that. So you can kind of change where you're going in the arena, or cut the turn off there, or come more to the inside or the outside to help the horse. But be aware, if they keep changing their speed or their footfall in a certain part of the arena, it's the same part each time, it's the terrain that you're on. So I would, his head would be perfect there for your running walk. But to see there, you're looking down. You did a nice turn on the haunches, but it would be so much better if, as you did it, you can see you're looking down at his head. You should pick things to stare at. So when you're over here, like stare at your husband, I'm sure he wouldn't mind you staring at him. And then stare at the barn or whatever's over in this direction to keep your eye up until you're completely finished with the turn. You can glance at their head, you just don't want to stare at it. But the main thing I'm seeing is not consistency with his head. You just got to hold more. You're going to feel like you're pulling on him, but if you want to get him more consistent, that's what you're going to have to do to get the message across because it's not enough pressure that he's understanding well enough. So now his head's back up and he's back to being a little bit more inverted. Okay. Okay, the other thing is he might be dull. I know you have your stick, but you want to use your stick a little bit more or add in a little pair of spurs because as you're going, watch your heel. So you're constantly kind of just nagging at him. And with the stubborn ones, they will just ignore that. 
So you don't want to nag at him. If he's not going, hit him harder with your stick, even if he shoots forward, and let him go forward a couple of steps and then slow down. But he needs to know you mean business or wear a little pair of spurs so you can start uh, touching him more with the spur to get him to go. Okay. So going through the pulls, he did pretty well. And there he got just a little bit trotty. So as they get better, sometimes you got to uh, spread the poles apart or go over one or two poles and then turn out. So if they start getting trotty, you want to get away from the poles because if they start getting more towards the trotty side and you hit two more poles, then they'll just go into a fox trot, unless you want a fox trot, but they'll go into a fox trot and then usually a hard trot. So as the horse is getting more as the horse is getting better in its gait, then you usually don't need as many poles. Or you just want to make it so you can get around some of the poles if they do start getting trotty. So there I see your leg moving too much and not enough contact on the reins that his head is still up high. So there he goes to trotting. You think I would have predicted that, huh? <laughs> But that's what happens. So your horse has a lot of talent. He can go lateral and he can go trot. Or, and so now we want to choose and pick what you want him to do, but you want him to do it on cue, not by himself. As he's getting a little faster here and his head is coming up, he's going more towards a saddle gate. So your horse has tons of things that he can do. It's just getting him to do it when you want him to do it. And that's more the frame that the horse is in. Okay, so here you come towards the poles again. It's not his fault. It's the poles are making him trotty. So he just starts going towards a trot. So again, less poles. I would only do them far, you know, have them out, but keep them spaced even farther away from each other. Because otherwise he's going to be going more towards the fox trot. There his neck and uh, head was a little bit more down and relaxed, which was better. And he was still keeping the correct footfall. So it looks like he has a flat walk, a running walk, a fox trot, and a saddle gate. Those are all the things this horse can do. It's just getting him to do those things on cue. And he looks like he's moving sideways off your leg. Again, if you're afraid to use a spur, just get dull ones. I posted that article on spurs the other day and I listed them in there. You could get the ones with the ball. I think if you get too small of one, he's probably not gonna listen to you, but those ones with the ball are pretty dull and if you hit them by accident it won't cause the horse usually to squirt forward or anything like that there it just looks like you're bending him so if you were trying to do a shoulder in or something like that just let me know but otherwise it kind of just looked like you were going across the diagonal to me so this is just your side pass. So when you do the side pass, put that stick in your left hand because a lot of the gated horses, especially the walking horses, they'll kind of do it in two pieces. So as you're going across and you're pushing with that leg, ask for less steps in the beginning. Ask for only like two steps and tap him with that stick. Put it on this side. Tap him behind your leg to get that hind quarter to catch up to it. And just do two steps in the beginning get him to do it correctly, stop, tell him he was a good boy, then do like three or four steps, make sure that hind quarter stays caught up with him, tell him he's a good boy, and then you can do more steps. But doing that many steps right in the beginning is a little bit hard. 
And now we'll see if you go the other way. So I would tap with the stick, tap with the stick, yep. And I would uh, kind of look up, lean back, hold this rein back a little bit more, like bend that elbow and hold it. Keep your left leg right at the girth and try to catch his shoulders because his shoulders are going faster than his hindquarters. So use your left leg to kind of hold him and that left rein to hold his shoulders and then use that leg, this is correct what you're doing here, and that stick to push him over. But sit back, bring your shoulders back and look up higher and you'll have the perfect side pass. But you gotta use that little bit more of your outside rein and leg to help correct him. And again, I would only start with two steps in the beginning and then I would go to more steps after that. So anytime you're gonna side pass, I would switch the stick over to back your leg up. It will really make a difference because these horses are so much harder to side pass than like quarter horses and warm bloods and stuff because they do it in parts. You do great back up with his head down, so I know you can get his head down when you're gating more. Okay. Yeah, and just make sure you're keeping your, when you're side passing, you're keeping your upper body back and uh, stare at something higher so it also lifts your chin up. I'm being picky, but you have a beautiful horse, you're a beautiful rider, it could look so much better. It looks great now, but it could be even so much better. Okay, so this wasn't in your long video, but you sent it, so of course I'm going to critique it because I'm anal and have OCD. So <laughs> when you're going here, his head's up. You do have a tighter rein because I think you were going for the canter. What you're going to see here is he's doing a saddle gait. So again, your horse can do a lot of different things. So if you want to do the saddle gait, this is usually the position most horses do it well. So see his tail bouncing up and down and you and you, he was doing it. You're going to go, now you're changing. Now you're going more towards a fox trot. Then I know you're coming in towards the canter, so you got the canter. Those first two poles, I'm going to go back, are a little bit too far away from each other. So he's leaping too much for it. So here you come again. So the other ones were kind of bounces. Let me do it again. So I think the first two pulls, I'm not sure what you were trying. Oops, I'm going the wrong direction. But as he jumps in, he has to take a huge step to get himself out of there. So these pulls and those pulls are not the same distance. So this was pretty good. It was just in and out, and that'll get you more of the rocking horse canter. But this I would roll in more, probably to about here, or just make it the same distance as you are here. And then he doesn't have to leap as much. And then it depends how fast you want his canter to be. I would like it a little bit slower. And then you just want to be aware of your lead. So there you kind of chucked yourself forward. You just missed the you just missed the spot that's okay but then he cantered on the wrong lead he switched to the wrong lead to kind of save you guys and then he went to pacing right there that's okay and then he was on the wrong lead again and then he went to trotting and then it's just kind of very unorganized there so we want to try to get it that we canter him i would keep him more in a circle you can still use the jumps and it looks like you're having a good time, <laughs> but you can still use the jumps and everything, but I would keep it in a circle and I would canter gait or canter walk, canter walk, and uh, get it to be a slower canter 
and I would like his head down a little bit more for the canner because it'll put him more on the diagonal. Since he can do so many things, you want to make sure you have clear cues for the different gates you're going to do. So for the flat walk and the running walk, have the top of his head kind of by the um, but about waist level. If you want to do a foxtrot, then bring his head down even more so the top of his head is maybe around your saddle level. And then when you want to do your saddle gait, have his head up here. But when you want to canter, have him rounded more or get your canter from the foxtrot because that's much easier to go from the foxtrot to a canter than a lateral gait to a canter but it just kind of got a little bit unorganized and he got faster and kind of strung out. So there's your saddle gate. So he has lots of talent. This is much better than the previous videos you sent me, but we just need, to, oh my God, you got donkeys. <laughs> I have a thing about donkeys. I have a problem. I just love them. So, um, you just want to have your cues to be clearer. And so when you're riding your flat walk and running walk, have more contact on him. Try to get his head down more so we can get his neck and his back relaxed. And he's kind of in neutral position. If you want a fox trot, that would be the next speed after your running walk and bring his head lower and round his back more. Then your saddle gait will be the next speed after your fox trot. But if you keep him rounded, he's going to go towards a trot. So to have him do the saddle gait next, you're going to bring his head up like this position, be sitting back and have the contact. And then again, if you're not sure, turn around and see if his tail is bouncing up and down. And then when you do the canter, keep him rounded. Have those poles a little bit closer. Do it in a circle if you can. And you can even have it that if you get nervous, like the jumps or poles are in the circle, but you could go around them if he was doing well and you didn't need the pole to help you to get back into it. But to me, his canter is a little fast. And I think if you do canter walk transitions or canter gate transitions, he won't rush it as much and it'll be a much slower canter.